Don't I look fab? My name is Hall, Augusta Hall, a.k.a. also known as Argluides Llanova, a.k.a. Gwenanen Gwent, a.k.a. Lady Llanova. I'm the Queen of Wool, a.k.a. the 19th century fashionista. I'm quite the celeb where I live, you know. Forget Chanel, Calvin Klein, Nike and Primani, because Llanova of Wales is what you need. I made this costume and it is brand new. My latest design, but I'll explain more later on. I've lived in Llanova all my life, ever since my mother and father moved here after they made their fortune. I lived in a grand house, very much like a doll's house, with red bricks and big windows and 14 bedrooms. I had a very good upbringing back in 1802. Some would say I'm posh. Well, I was given an education, love for my family, food in my belly, which is more than most children had in those days. I learnt about the world. I came to like cooking and do you like Welsh rarebit? It's the best cheese on toast. And barra brief with a little Welsh butter. Do you like barra brief? Oh, those were my specialities, but not together, of course. No. I came to like painting and you can see some of my paintings later on. And I learned French. A quelle joie de vivre. It means the pleasure of life. Do you know what else used to give me so much pleasure? Learning the Welsh language. The language of Llanova, the language of my country. I used to speak to my father's tenants about the future of the Welsh language and that's when I felt an awakening. Less and less people saw the purpose for the language and so I had to learn the language. I had to be part of it and I learnt it in no time. Isn't it a beautiful language? Oh. In Llanova, I settled with my husband and three dear children. May they rest in peace. Hang on. You might know who my husband was. His name was Benjamin Hall, but I called him Ben. He was six foot seven inches, nearly double my size. A good man. A very famous clock and tower in London is named after him. Yes, the Big Ben. Can you believe it? Ben was a very well-respected politician in London. He made sure the clock was built properly and therefore they named it after him. Do you remember me saying earlier that I'm the Queen of Wool? Well, I set up my own woolen mill at my estate in Llanover and named it Melin Gwenfrud. Look at this costume. This is the first costume I created from my woolen mill. I try to get everyone to wear it. I raise the profile of the Welsh costume throughout Wales. If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be wearing the Welsh costume today on St David's Day. I was the most fashionable lady in Wales. In my opinion, fashion means looking good, but also being warm and comfortable at the same time. And that is why wool works perfectly. So, how on earth does a little piece of wool like this turn into something so wonderfully striking as this. How about we go back in time, back to an important time for the history of wool in Wales. Here we are, 1865. This is when it all began. Wool became very popular in this period. Wales wasn't only the land of song, but also the land of wool. To start off with, people would make things from wool as a way of making extra money. 
One of my tenant's cousins came from Llanover too. Everyone knew them as Taylor Orgov, the Orgov family. Benjamin Jones was head of the family. No, not Benjamin, my husband, but another Benjamin. They would farm during the day, but by night they would create things out of their sheep's wool. Every week they would travel all the way to Llangevelach to set up their stall to sell their goods, such as blankets and cloth. But oh, something big happened after that. There was more and more work in Wales and this expansion happened in a very short time. It was like an explosion. It was called the Industrial Revolution. All over Wales they mined for coal, slate, iron, copper, plum, and they needed a lot of people to do this work. And so, therefore, they needed more clothes, made from wool, of course. But it was a difficult time for workers. Heavy work, laborious, long hours, six days a week, 12 hour days, dark in the mornings as you got up and dark as you got home. The same thing every day. Some very young children worked in these factories. Dangerous work it was too. They would have to crawl under the weaving machines that would fire from one side to the next and the children's work would be to pick up the pieces of wool that had fallen on the floor. Indeed, they were punished for speaking or looking out the window. Thou shalt not speak in this factory. Indeed, worse than that, the masters of the mills lived above them and they could look down on them. You, less talking, more working. Faster, faster. You're late. Silence in this factory. But to me, good working conditions were so important. I would treat my workers with respect at my mill, Melling Gwenfrud. Well done, excellent work. I love your work. Yes, you may talk. Beautiful patterns, bendig edig. To me, their happiness was of the utmost importance. But the big question is, how do you make cloth or breath in? It starts off with the sheep. Do you know how many sheep there are in Wales? 10 million. That's over three times the number of people that live here. Unbelievable. Do you know how often a sheep is sheared? Once a year, usually in the springtime. There are eight steps to create brethin or cloth. The first step is shearing. The sheep's coat would be sheared in one piece, then rolled, ready to make it easy to take to the woolen mill. The second stage is sorting. The workers would sort out their wool in accordance to its quality. That is, different types of wool make different things at the end of the day. That is, clothing being one type of wool and carpets being another type of wool. We call this sorting. The next step is disperse. At this time when a lot of wool was being made, they used a big machine called the drum to open up the wool to release the fibres so that they could then comb it. This drum would turn and it had enormous teeth. And the fourth step, carding. They would use a huge carding machine. It's like a great big comb. This is my favourite part of the process. This is what I have to do every morning and night, otherwise I end up looking like a sheep myself. This machine would undo the knots and straighten the wool, ready to be spun. The next step is spinning. The process of spinning turns the combed wool into a strong yarn like this. The machine that did this was called a spinning mule 
and the spinning mule could produce several one of these at the same time. The Ogov family did not use the spinning wheel. They used the spinning jenny. And the spinning jenny could only produce one roll at a time. Whereas the spinning mule could produce several one of these at the same time, over 400 rolls. Can you believe it? Amazing. And look, you can see the difference between the two. Only one person here, like Benjamin Jones used to do, working on the spinning jenny, and several people here working on the spinning mule. And look, the child doing the dangerous work under the spinning mule. Step number six, weaving. A very important step. When the yarn weaves together like this to make brethin or cloth. The machine that did this was called the dob cross. And that's it. But before you can use it, you must complete stages number seven and eight. Stage number seven, washing and drying. Shall I tell you a secret? Wee Wee was the best thing to clean wool. Because of this, people would sell their Wee Wee onto the woolen mills. Who'd have thought that somebody would make a fortune from going to the toilet? Anyway, moving on to stage number eight, the colouring. If you wanted a breath in that is one colour like this, you would colour it after the washing and drying process. But if you wanted a patterned cloth, such as this, then you would colour it before the combing process, before it turns into a yarn. And that's it. Why is sheep's wool to make clothing? Yes, it's soft, but there are many more reasons. It keeps you warm in the winter, and yet it keeps you cool and fresh in the summer. What was the big event in 1914? The First World War. But what is the connection between sheep and this war? The men's uniforms were made from wool. Their socks were made from wool also. Conditions in the trenches were very bad for the soldiers and their feet would sink into the wet marshes. Because of this, they had to change their socks very regularly. Because without these socks, they could catch trench foot. This was the golden era of our woolen mills because there was so much need for uniforms and socks for the soldiers. But after the war ended, there was less demand for clothing and so they had to close many of the woolen mills. But I'm so happy that people still dress in wool and that the Welsh costume is still so popular in Wales today. It makes me smile. I'm so proud that the children of Wales still wear the Welsh costume on St David's Day today. <laughs> Oh, before I go, I must show you some of my paintings. In 1834, I won the first prize in the National Eisteddfod for writing an essay on the importance of the Welsh costume and for these pictures that depict different versions of them. And you know what? You can see these pictures in the National Library of Wales in Aberystwyth. People say that I'm a bit of a Welsh rarebit. Don't forget about me, Augusta Hall, aka Arglwyves Llanover, aka Gwenanen Gwent, aka Lady Llanover. <laughs>